Welcome back to the channel. Today is a very special day because I have a Reich 1507T. This is a knife that I've been looking at for a while. I hadn't pulled the trigger on or tried to get a hold of one yet, but it's a very cool knife. It's got some different stuff about it. This is a very angular knife. This is a Quaken style knife, so the blade is contained entirely within the handle on this one. My wife saw this knife and her immediate comment was if Spock from Star Trek carried a pocket knife, this would be his pocket knife. And I can't disagree. It's got that very angular kind of Vulcan-esque but still sweeping look to it. It's got a lot of cool angles and nice machining on the handle. So it's very aesthetically pleasing knife. There's a lot going on in the styling and there's also a lot going on in the engineering on this knife. So let's take a look at the ergonomics first of all. As you saw when I tried to open it, this is a pretty stiff flipper. First few tries when it was brand new, it was pretty hard to open. Uh, my wife with smaller hands had some trouble getting a good purchase on that. It's okay for me, but it is on the tight side. It's loosening up a little bit as I use it, but it's still definitely a stiff folder. The other thing my wife said about this knife when she saw it was that this knife deserves to be on a turntable uh, so that you can see all the really cool angles and just the amount of effort that went into designing this knife to look really cool. Uh, this knife is quite comfortable in the hand. There are a few little sharp spots, which I noted when I first pulled it out of the package, that were annoying, but as I was using it and doing my cutting tests and things, it wasn't as big of a deal as I thought it would be, so it is a relatively comfortable knife. There is a sharp spot back here on the pocket clip, and here, and the front half of the pocket clip, and these little edges on the front here uh, are a little sharp, but like I said, when I was actually using the knife during my cutting tests and things, uh, it was not an issue. The pocket clip is worth noting because this cannot be changed from side to side on this knife. It's right hand tip up carry only. That's the only option you get on this one. The other thing about the pocket clip is that it's attached from the inside. The bolt is actually on the inside here. So you have to disassemble the, the knife in order to tighten the pocket clip if it does loosen. The flipper is a bit on the small side, but it's not bad. It, it sticks out enough that it's, I'm not feeling like my, uh, my finger's gonna slip off of it or anything, but it's not as big as some. If you compare it to like the uh, 0452 carbon fiber, you can see it's much smaller than that. Here's a uh, Reich M3. Reich M3 has a very large flipper, but you can see it's much larger than this one. The edge retention test for this knife, it is M390 steel and it had excellent edge retention. It was 275 cuts in my edge retention test, which is, which is on the better side. Very few knives make it past 300. Uh, so given the corrosion resistance of M390, which it's known for, that is an excellent, excellent number. Size comparison. I already had the 0452 carbon fiber out there, so you can see it's pretty similar. Uh, let's go with the standard Benchmade Griptilian. You can see this is longer and thinner, both in handle and in blade. Here is a Sog Vision XR. That's one I haven't had on here in a while. And a Spyderco Caribbean, which is also a large knife. Vision XR is more of your standard kind of knife. Uh, all these other ones are fairly large knives so that you can get a, an idea of where that falls along the spectrum. One thing I will note about this knife, because they've made the blade narrow this way, they've given a relatively steep cutting edge. So the cutting edge when looking at it this way is more of a steep angle than a shallow angle, which does increase the cutting effort some. You had to push a little harder on this knife than I was used to, but it wasn't excessive. Uh, the way they've lined up the titanium blade stop there, that's actually the stop pin that holds the blade from extending. 
too far. The way they've widened that there makes it very comfortable to push cut on with your thumb. It's a lot of surface area there and it doesn't dig into your thumb or anything. The only real negative I have besides those little sharp edges on this knife is that if you're looking at the point, and you probably won't be able to see it in the video, the point is just a little bit off center. It doesn't perfectly line up with the blade. It's a little bit off center to the left. Otherwise, the grind lines on this are completely spectacular. Uh, the grind lines on the handle are just beautiful. Let's get a quick weight on this. Weight on this is 4.1 ounces, which you can see is a bit lighter than the 0452 carbon fiber, even though this has a complete carbon fiber side. It is a slightly larger knife, but this is in that size range and right in that weight range, even though it's, it's full titanium. So lots of really cool engineering. I will get into the disassembly and then we'll go over conclusions on the knife. One thing I want to point out on the engineering of this knife is that the lock shelf here where the frame lock contacts the blade is enormous. Uh, this is my 0452 carbon fiber, which is kind of the standard I use for a large lock shelf. You can see this one is even bigger. Uh, so this knife, despite the fact that it's a long slender knife, is set up for hard use and should have a lot of wear to it and last for a long time. The frame lock is also pretty stiff. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't have a lot of flex to it when I push on it, even with two thumbs. So that's a good sign. It's a well set up frame lock. They've left a lot of titanium there at the bottom. So it's very thick and very sturdy, even though this is a long slender knife. Here's my plate. Uh, T8, it looks like here on the side. Nice large pivot bolt. And then there are T6s everywhere else. Let's take everything out of this side and see what happens. So these bolts on the back are actually threaded directly into the titanium backspacer, which allows them to make this knife a lot more narrow in profile because you're not fitting a round steel standoff into there. Okay, so that bolt I can't get to from this side because the, the pocket clip runs interference. So let's take out this side and see what happens. I like that they've gone with large bolt heads on these back bolts because that reinforces the knife. Ah, okay, so that's a this one goes into a, this is just a, uh, the nut on this side. So you don't have to take that bolt out to get the side off, which is nice. There is your internals. You can see a skeletonized steel handle or titanium handle, large uh, over travel stop and insert there. I can't tell if this is a steel washer. Yes. Okay. So that's a steel bearing race that goes into the outside of the scale there for durability and the titanium is still pretty thick so there so they've they've done some strategic thickening of the titanium so that they can have a steel bearing race a lot of titanium there and then not a lot of recess into the blade uh, there's no you can see there's no recessing of the bearings into the blade so they've left the full thickness of the blade here this is just a really really sturdy build you can also see what they've done is there's no stop pin back here. So the stop pin is actually this titanium piece that's bolted to the blade, which is a very sturdy way to do a stop pin. What that does is it widens where the blade contacts. So you can see you have the full width of the handle back here where the blade is contacting the handle instead of just the blade contacting the stop pin in the middle like this. When it's just contacting the stop pin in the middle like this, there's more chance of rocking. When you brace the blade all the way out like this on the edges to the stop pin that is part of the blade out here, it makes the knife a lot less prone to wiggle, a lot more rigid. And you can tell when you open this thing, it locks up very securely. 
The other thing it does is it changes the leverage ratio of where the stop pin is related to the pivot. So with an internal, like, a, like an external stop pin that goes in the handle here, it's only this far from the pivot. With this one, you can see the stop pin is actually much further from the pivot, which means there's more leverage to stop the blade from wiggling, and it makes the blade that much more solid. Uh, very, very well engineered stop pin geometry here. I really like that a lot, and it, it shows when you open the blade. It locks very securely. This is not a keyed pivot. Uh, I was looking to see if it rotates, and it does. Uh, so there's nothing to keep that from spinning. It wasn't a problem to get out, but that could be an issue uh, going forward if this pivot ever locks up. Uh, you're going to have a hard time getting that out of there if it does. Here's the other half. Let's take off the whole backspacer so I can show you that. There's the other backspacer, little tiny bolts on that backspacer. And you can see it's threaded directly into the titanium there rather than given a steel insert. Shouldn't be a problem, uh, but it's just a different design. So that's interesting. One issue I did have with this is, at least at first, that little shelf there by the flipper when you flip it open tends to catch your finger a little bit. I noticed it at first after carrying the knife for a little while, I didn't notice it as much. Here is the bolt for the pocket clip. Definitely I would put some Loctite on that because if that comes loose, it's going to be real annoying to disassemble the whole knife to get it out. There's the tiny little bolt. And then this is a trick to get out. That pocket clip is stuck on there. and it runs interference by hitting the outside. That's actually very strangely set up. Uh, so I can't slide the pocket clip that way because the bolt's in the way. I can't take the bolt out because the pocket clip's in the way. That's, in, that's intriguing, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, there we go, it rotates. Okay, so you rotate the pocket clip this way to get it around that bolt, and then you can disassemble both of them. So there is that. Uh, let me see how hard this is to take out. I would like to see how this is, yeah. recessed into the blade. I hope it is not just with the little tiny bolt, because that would be a durability concern, which is why I am taking this out. Ah, okay, so it's not a durability concern. What they've done is they have keyed the titanium blade stop into the steel of the blade with a square there. So that's also actually a very sturdy setup. Love the engineering on this knife. Uh, so there's my disassembly. Overall conclusions of this knife uh, are that this is a extremely well engineered knife. If the little niggles of the tiny sharp spaces on the pocket clip and the handle don't bother you, this is an absolutely fantastic gentleman's folder slash everyday carry knife that has some pretty good durability chops. So like this knife, check out the links down below. I'll put an Amazon link to buy it. Do all the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, etc. and enjoy your adventures.